Good morning. Welcome to Haddonfield United Methodist Church on this beautiful Easter morning. We welcome you here. Can everybody do me a favor? If you are sitting on the ends like this, and if there are seats on the inside, can you just scoot in towards the inside so that people can come in on the outside? Does that make sense? Okay, so I'll let you guys do that on your own. But we welcome you here this morning. Whether you're here in person or online, we welcome you. Let's stand together and sing our opening song. It's called Praise.
everyone. And happy Easter. I'm Pastor Cricket. I'm the pastor of Student and Mission Ministries here at Haddonfield United Methodist Church. So if you're joining us in person, welcome. If you're joining us online, welcome to you also. We just have a few announcements this morning, um, starting off with our evening in Italy. Now, you might not recognize this title because we used to call it the pasta dinner, but it's so much more than a pasta dinner this year. We've got a pasta dinner, a silent auction, and a talent show all wrapped in one. Is that amazing or what? It's going to be great. <laughs> you're, you're clapping and you haven't even seen anything yet. That's awesome. Um, so that's taking place on April 27th. Um, the information is in your bulletin. There's a QR code there to scan and buy tickets. So make sure you get your tickets because it does tend to sell out. Uh, we're having a book study coming up this Wednesday and every Wednesday for the next five weeks. The book is called Saving Us. It's by Dr. Dr. Catherine Hayhoe, um, who is a climate scientist. And she became a climate scientist because she is a Christian. And she said um, that she was so um, inspired by her faith that she really wanted to take care of creation. So her book talks about that, and it talks about how we can have conversations with one another about what's going on with the weather. She deems it global weather weirding, I think, um, because nobody can debate that. You can't get into an argument that our weather is weird, right? So this morning at um, sunrise, I said, you know, we don't know what it's gonna be. It could have been 80 this morning, could have been 30, and you know, nobody knows. Um, so we can all agree on that. So we're going to talk about her book, and it's for the next five weeks. You can also sign up for that. Um, the QR code is in your bulletin. It's a hybrid class, too. So if you want to zoom in and join us, feel free to do that. One of the um, traditions of this church on Easter is that we have a flower cross out in the front right on Warwick Road. Um, so after the service, I just want to remind you all to get a carnation and just take it outside and put it onto the flower cross. We do that after every service. So by the end um, of our worship services today, that cross will be filled with flowers. Um, and it just is out there for a sign to everyone passing by that our Christ has risen. I just have one more special announcement for you. And I need some friends to help me do it. Oftentimes we find Jesus in unexpected places, a smile from a stranger, a hug from a friend, or on top of the hand sanitizer at church. This Easter, the youth group hid little Jesuses all around the church to remind you that Jesus surrounds us even in the most unexpected places. If you find a little Jesus, please take it home or keep it in your pocket because a little Jesus goes a long way. <laughs> In the beginning, when God created all in the beginning, when God created all things, God called the natural world good. The sun, moon, stars, water, plants, creepy crawly things, fish, animals. It is good. Then God created humans to till and keep the earth so life could be abundant and God would be revealed to all people through the oceans, mountains, trees, sunrise, and flowers. Today, our planet is in need of care. Just as Jesus called us to love our neighbors as ourselves, we must do so through ensuring all people have places to live, food to eat, water to drink, and a place where we can live together in peace and harmony. Join us in April as we see God's glory revealed to us in our common home. Friends, let us stand together. We're going to continue in our worship service today. We're going to sing a song. It's called, Yes, He Lives. sinners his body broken a kin forsaken 
as he hung on that cross the veil in pieces the temple shaken they mourned the savior but it wasn't for long oh he lives he's risen from the There's just so many new faces. I wanted us to have a chance to say hi to everybody. Who are you? Hi, Jess. Hi, good morning. See on a hill of Calvary, my Savior bled for me. My Jesus set me free. And look at the wounds that give me life. Grace flowing from his side, no greater sacrifice. What he's done, what he's done, all the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven. I praise. Oh 
I'm so grateful to see you and worship with you uh, in this morning, whether it's your first time to join us or many times to worship with us. I don't know much about you, but in, on, when I woke up in, on, today in the morning, I felt something different. It was the same day as last, yesterday. However, it was something different. I think because it's Easter and Jesus who uh, celebrating the resurrection, uh, risen Christ, who changes our reality forever. And so why, wherever you may be on your life journey, whatever you bring in your, uh, today before our God, I want us to create the space of prayer with each other in a community of faith. Joy and all praise and concerns and fear and hopes and dreams, let us lift them up before our Lord, who is risen today. And so I want to invite you to close your eyes and take a deep breath. Give God undivided attention. I will offer a word of prayer and then you will be invited to join to pray with each other with the Lord prayer. Oh, loving and gracious God, thank you so much for this glorious day of the resurrection of our Lord, whom we really love. You broke the silence. You broke the darkness. You broke the power of sin and death. You are the light. You are our hope. and You are our peace. You are new life. We proclaim our Lord is no longer in a tomb. We proclaim the mystery of faith today. Christ is risen and our Christ will come again to the world with great joy and praise. Let this joy be contagious to the people around us today. Let this love prevail in the world, hurting and broken. Thank you for making us, embracing us, calling us, and loving us as we are. 
you know our limitations you know our shortcomings however you never abandoned us but loved us till the end you understand our pain and sorrow because you went through all these things at this moment we search for you we long for you and we yearn for you May your peace and hope be granted in our moment of disappointment, despair, and struggle. May your healing come in a way we could never have imagined before. To your children who suffer from various health concerns, cancer, dementia, addiction, or many others who are unexpected diagnoses. Oh Lord, may your comfort be granted to those who are mourning the loss of their loved ones in this season to those who are in hospice bed today may your peace on earth especially to the people suffering from war and violence be on earth we ask for your divine interventions O oh lord have mercy on us we lift up all our hopes and dreams for you, to you, O oh Lord. Have mercy on us. We pray for our community as we continue our journey together. Bless our hearts and mind and hands and feet to be the sign of your love and your hope wherever we may go. Renew and restore the joy of salvation in our region, Christ, this day and in the days to come. Oh Lord, we love you. We lift up all our prayers of spoken and unspoken. In the name of Jesus Christ, and continue, pray together with the word that Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. The word of God for us today is from the Gospel of John 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. 
but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said, told him that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning. Happy Easter to you. It is really great to be with you, and thank you for coming today. If you're visiting for the first time, we're delighted to have you, welcome you. I hope you feel at home, and if you're coming home where you are every week or regularly, welcome back home. Today, we celebrate Easter in community. Remember, at the end of this service, I will try to remind you, but uh, to if you make your way out to the garden, either through a side door or around the church, we have these uh, flowers out there. You just grab one, put it in the flower cross. It's a long-standing, beloved tradition of this church, and I hope you get to do it today. Um, I invite you to turn to page six in your bulletin. We prepare sermon notes. If you'd like to follow along, there's some blanks for you to fill in if you'd like. It's a way for active listening and to go deeper into our message. Today, I, I want you to think about this just for a moment. When was the last time you cried? Was it a long time ago? Was it this morning? Was it maybe you can't remember? And why did you cry? Were you angry? Were you really happy? Were you surprised? Or were you sad? Now, at the time I wrote this sermon, the last time I cried was last Sunday. And since then, again on Thursday, and Friday, and maybe yesterday. Last Sunday, the last time that I remembered crying, was uh, I was with my family at the musical Frozen in Philadelphia. And yeah, it's a little embarrassing. Why is he admitting that to his congregation? Well. I want to tell you, I am what my family would consider an easy crier. I'm talking Super Bowl commercials, <laughs> concerts, musicals, plays, Disney movies, Lord of the Rings, uh, whatever it may be, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame acceptance speeches, <laughs> right? Now... I share this with you because my kids give me such a hard time about this. It's, it's gotten to the point where there's a, when there's like a moving moment in a movie, my oldest daughter will turn to me and she'll look for it and she'll say, look, dad's crying. <laughs> and recently it evolved. She actually pulled out her phone, took a video and got a close up of my tear. Right. I'm not embarrassed. Now here's, let me tell you the weird thing. When someone I know dies, I don't cry easily. When there's a tragedy, I have a hard time crying. So why can I cry at a puppy, but it's hard for me to cry at a, at a loss? I don't know. Why do some people cry at the drop of a hat and some people have a really hard time mustering up emotions? I don't know. But I did a little research on crying, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of stuff you can find, and it doesn't all agree. Charles Darwin, the evolutionary theorist, was baffled by human crying because as he looked at functions of evolutionary species, he saw no purpose for emotional crying. Humans are considered to be the only species we know of that cry for emotional reasons, although some will dispute that. 
But Darwin said there is no evolutionary reason and that it is a useless function. Well, modern researchers don't agree with Darwin. We actually know that crying uh, can have a really important interpersonal communication function for humans. Researchers have proven that crying can dispel anger. Not only anger the person crying, but have you ever been really angry at someone and then they cry? Well, you can't be angry anymore, right? I mean, you can, but you look a little inhumane, right? We also know that emotional tears, this is really cool, emotional tears are more viscous or thicker than when you're cutting onions or your eyes water, and so they're more visible on your cheek. And when one person cries, well, what happens? Other people. Some people believe that there is a hormone released when you cry that elicits other people to cry. It's almost a sub, a subconscious communication to other people. Why we cry and, and why crying is a thing, we don't know exactly, but what we do know is that we cry ultimately because we need one another. Humans need communication and connection with one another, and that's why we cry. So why is it that poor Mary Magdalene, the first one who arrives at the tomb of Jesus. In all four Gospels, they agree on one thing. Mary is the first to be there and the first to preach an Easter sermon. And in John's Gospel, she is asked two times, Woman, why do you weep? Well, the feisty Chris wants to get in the story and say, Why do you think she weeps? Her best friend, her, her leader, her master, the one that she thought was going to turn everything on its head, was killed brutally. She witnessed it. She wept with his mother. She watched everything fall apart. Why do you think she weeps? And now she's come to the tomb, and if, to add insult to, to injury, the body's not there. And within Judaism, you do not disturb a body that has died. It is a sacred thing to inter a body, and it should be done with the right religious rituals, which Jesus did not get to have because it was the Sabbath. So she has come to do that, which is the religious duty, and the body has been disturbed. So then after the angels ask Mary, why do you weep? She then runs into a gardener, she thinks. And he has the nerve to ask her the same question. Woman, why do you weep? Today, what I want to say to you is that we must remember that Easter begins in grief. Easter begins in grief. And Easter is not about my life is awesome. Okay? Easter is not about everything is coming up roses and that everything has gone my way. Easter begins in acknowledging death and grief and human loss. And what I want to say to you is the secret I know that you carry and that I carry is that we all have reasons to weep today. Whether we cry easily, whether we're not comfortable with it, or whether we do, we have things that cause us sorrow. We, I don't know about you all, but I am getting older. And as I get older, I grieve things that aren't the same. My neck hurts, my knees hurt. But more than that, Family members that we love, we have lost. My family lost, a, my, my wife's uncle passed just this past week. Members of this congregation and friends are, are battling illness and disease and cancer and all kinds of things. We're seeing images of war around the world. And I don't know about you, but AI is awesome, but it's also a little frightening. And sometimes it feels like the world is changing a little too quickly. Why do you weep? We bring our grief on Easter morning and begin there. But it's not the end of the story. There's a turning point in the story, and that turning point is when the gardener says Mary's name. Mary. He recognizes her, and when he recognizes her, she recognizes him. And she realizes immediately that it is the impossible. It is Jesus who died who has come alive. 
And she says, Rabuni, which means my rabbi, my teacher. And immediately Jesus says, Mary, don't cling to me. And, and the Greek actually says, stop what you're doing. I like that better. He says, oh, stop. Stop what you're doing and go. Go and tell. Get out of this graveyard. Get out of this place of grieving and weeping and mourning. Go because we have work to do. He says, go and tell my disciples that I have risen. So the turning point of Easter happens in interpersonal relationships. And it, we move from grief to joy. Now, what I love about Easter is that it's not this new idea, but if you know anything about the Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures, there's a theme throughout the entire collection of books in the Old Testament. Psalm 30 captures it best. It says, Weeping lasts for the nighttime, but joy comes in the morning. Always the psalmists and the prophets and other scriptures are saying that God transforms our weeping into dancing, our grief into joy. And here Jesus shows us that God can even transform death into life. But for those skeptics among us, for the, those who are rational and scientific and we like our facts, like all of us, like me, this really doesn't make any sense. It's almost like one of those movies where you have to suspend your disbelief. Well, I want to probe that a little bit. The reason that it's hard for us humans to, to fathom this story is because we are taught from, from when we are children to think in dualities. If you don't believe me, let me ask you this. What's the duality of short, big, light, Dark, well, there's a couple of shades there. <laughs> Alive. Right. Things are this or that. It's night or it's morning. Right. It's winter or it's spring. Which is it now? Mm. Spring. Is it spring because the calendar tells us? Is it spring because the birds tell us or the flowers tell us? And when does it actually become spring? Right. We think in dualities. But life does not always function that way. It is really hard for me to fathom that this month marks the fourth anniversary of the COVID lockdown. March 20th, 2020, your life changed and my life changed. I did this and you did not do that. <laughs> you were behind a screen, right? And everything was very, very different. Our lives were, were changed far beyond what we believed. And I remember thinking at that time, well, maybe we'll be back by Easter, right? Maybe we'll be back by summer. Maybe we'll be back by the fall. And we just never knew, never knew. And I, a few months into the pandemic, I remember that a book was released. And I saw it online, and it was called The Wisdom Pattern by Father Richard Rohr, who's a Franciscan priest. And, and I, I love his works. But this book seems so interesting to me because he was sharing the essence of Franciscan thought. And what I mean by that is St. Francis of Assisi left in history, he left his village in, in Assisi, Italy, and he left his very wealthy businessman father. He left the church and he lived in nature and he lived among the poor and he founded, I believe, the first religious order within the Catholic church. And it's people who lived together in common poverty and because they saw God revealed, not in opulence or in high places, but God was revealed in nature. For St. Francis is known as the patron saint of animals and, 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 and nature. And what Rohr said was that there is a truth, a deep gospel truth that the world needed during this COVID time. And that is that, that while the world functions in twos, God always functions in threes. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right, left, the world, God move, always functions in three movements. And these are the three movements that Rohr says comes from Franciscan thought. Order, disorder, and reorder. Now, what I loved about this book is it helped me to realize, A, I was grieving because I was in the midst of disorder. And when we are in disorder, it feels like death. How many of you, your lives were disordered, right? 
Do, do you know what, what I saw a lot on screens early on in the pandemic, on, on guys especially? We stopped shaving. I stopped shaving. You don't have, I hope you don't have a picture with me and a beard. But I even had a beard around Easter time, right? We didn't know what day it was. We didn't, there, you weren't going to get coffee at the same time. We weren't dropping kids off at school. We weren't going to work because we were kind of working all the time. Or we didn't get to be with family at holidays. So we were disordered. And when you go through disorder, it messes everything up and it feels like death. But the joy is for everything that gets disordered, God is a reordering God. God creates something new from that which was. God says in the Bible, behold, I make all things new. But we humans, we like things just as they are, don't we? I mean, I, I have become very routinized, and I like my routine. And so when things get disordered in my life, I grieve and I mourn. But God says to us, like Jesus said to Mary, stop what you're doing and go. Don't cling to me. Don't cling to the old order. You know what was revealed to me in this text? I feel like God was speaking to me. When we cling to the old order, we weep. Because all we have is grief. All we have is disorder. When we're holding on to what used to be and who used to be in our lives and how it used to be and the glory days and if we could just get stuff back, when we cling to that, we're stuck at the tomb. But Jesus says, let go and go because I am doing a new thing. Go and tell that I have resurrected because we have work to do. Amen? For the doubters in the room, here's what I want to say. I love when science and faith corroborate one another. All you need to know is that the first law of thermodynamics says it all. Energy is neither created nor is it destroyed. It is transferred. Our spirits are transferred from this life into God's life everlasting, and that which has passed is transferred into what God is doing in the new order. Friends, how many of you feel like you're experiencing a little disorder right now. It can feel like grief and loss. But here's the good news. God is bringing about a new order. God is doing a new beautiful thing in this moment. God is surrounding you with new people and new opportunities. And what's most important is that God wants you and me to stop what we are doing and go. Live lives that mirror and echo the love of God that can change mourning into dancing, weeping into joy, and even death into life. Friends, here's the good news. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Amen. Friends, we want to continue to worship with our offering uh, for the mission, the work that our risen Christ called, called us to be and called us to do. And I don't know uh, if you were able to see the flowers blooming on the way coming to the church. Did you hear the birds singing huh? in the morning or evening? And I always, they remind me that they are praising and worshiping they are creator with what they have. And I want to invite you to worship and praise our creator together with what you have. And our usher will pass the off, uh, offering plate in a second. And I want to remind you that there are many ways for you to give and to be a part of God's greater story with us. Um, the online giving is always available at headonfieldumc.org slash give. And if you are online giver, I invite you to just uh, play, uh, place I give online card available before you to the offering plate. And... Let us continue to worship with a gift of music and gift of giving. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone. This solid ground 
firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. today I would like everybody to stand and we're going to sing a song it's called every victory
Now y'all know I love a good bridge. This bridge is good, y'all. Let's go. Every victory is yours. Every victory is yours. You rose. You reign. Death is buried. Come on. Death is buried in the grave. Hell cannot defy your name. You rose. You reign. Every victory is yours. Every victory is yours. You rose. You reign. Death is buried in the grave. Hell cannot defy your name. You rose. You reign. One name, one name hold every victory. One voice that silences the enemy. One king, one king who reigns for all eternity. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Friends. Let's take our grief, our frustration, our regret, our grudges, our hurt, our anger, our fear, and let's leave it in the garden and go. Not cling on to that which holds us back, but allow God to move us forward to what is ahead. For God is making all things new. May God reorder the order and disorder in our lives and remember that Christ has died and with that death is all that brings us sorrow and regret and grief and with resurrection let us find new hope new joy and new life as you go i remind you to find your carnation so that we can proclaim to all those that drive by this church christ has died christ has risen and christ will come again go in the love and grace and peace of god amen well back to every victory come on